G'day, Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab. And today, in the lab, I'm gonna be unboxing the Morningstar GenStar MPPT. This is their newest smart MPPT. Smart because it's got this ready rail system that allows you to add lots of modules to it to expand its functionality. It's got a 200 volt maximum input voltage and it comes in 60, 80 and 100 amp current outputs. Suitable for batteries from 12, 24, 36 or 48 volts. Now for my Australian viewers, you'll be excited to know this is one of the very few CEC listed approved MPPTs. That's a big deal. That means you can claim STCs on those panels that you connect. So in the back, I've got the unit. So I'm just gonna bring them into the studio and unbox them for the first time. And uh, yeah, get to feel the product. Well, there it is, the GenStar, ready for unboxing. But let's open it up and, and find out how it works. These uh, four boxes, this is the GenStar, and these are the ready rail system. Now, let's just open these up first. The ready rail is a means of adding functionality to the GenStar, so you don't actually have to buy all of these units. But what we've got in the first one here is the battery meter current measuring block and ready rail system. Uh, so there's uh, instruction manual. There are some uh, little wires, probably for sensing, such the things as battery voltage. I note that they're twisted, so it's probably to uh, ameliorate any noise, any noise that could be um, produced by cables running in parallel to each other in a noisy environment. And that is the ready rail system. So what we're looking at here is a, oh, it's got someone's card on it, there we go, is the ready rail shunt. So this is has the ability to measure across a shunt, and I see it's got um, two terminals, uh, so A1, A2, and B1, B2, so presumably two shunts. Uh, I guess a typical use of that would be that you've got a solar shunt and you've got a battery shunt. So you can measure the amount of renewable energy entering from solar sources, uh, presumably other than the, the GenStar itself. And on the bottom here, it just clips into a little DIN rail on the GenStar um, unit. Now, that's the ready rail shunt. Next up is the dry contact control block for the ready rail system. So let's have a little look in here. Here we go. Once again, quick start guide. Uh, always good to have one of those. <laughs> and there it is. Uh, and it's in multiple languages. <laughs> Very good. Yep, one, two, three, four languages. Uh, it's quite a big box for a very small unit, but I guess it's a standard unit. So what have we got in here? It is the dry contact controller. Now, let's get all my bits out. So it says on here that we have um, one, two, three sets of terminals, and I guess on those terminals can be used for controlling uh, various things. Um, I'm looking at the side here and there's uh, a 12 volt uh, relay, so there's a relay coil there with a six amp uh, 250 volt rating uh, on its output. So I'll put some more details in the description on these units. Like I said, I'm just looking at these for the first time, and you'll notice that they have a, a, a pin on the side and a matching uh, socket. So these these can be connected together uh, into groups. So if you've got more than one of these, got to line these up carefully, get those pins in, and we can then collect them together as a group. Anyway, I'll leave those there. Don't want to do it too roughly. The Third item is the battery interface block. Okay, so quick start guide. And here we've got a some a data cable and some packaging. And what's in here? Ah, so as it says on here, BMS, Battery Management System. So no doubt this is a device for communicating with battery management 
uh, with batteries so that uh, they can be correctly charged in a smart way with managed batteries. So let's have a look here. What do we got? We've got um, a data cable and it says on one end uh, BMS or EMS, no BMS, uh, yep BMS1 and BMS1. Okay so I guess we're plugging that in. Now I can see there's a, a terminating uh, resistor in this unit here so no doubt that goes at the end of the chain if you have more than one. So I'll put a, a link to um, the compatible battery systems that this works with. So that's your, your BMS. Now this is quite a big deal, not to my knowledge, very few charge controllers actually uh, designed to work with managed batteries. Uh, so having that smart BMS function allows you to use predominantly lithium or similar types of managed batteries. All right, it's time to get into the big box. Let's cut it open. Now I've never seen this unit before, so it's <laughs> really day one for me. And this product was only released um, last year. Uh, well, that's when I received this, so it's taken me a while to get to unboxing it, but it is available on their website right now. So it's a currently available product. That looks like a battery temperature sensor and a very big ferrite coil. Um, yet another quick start guide. I love those quick start guides, guys, and uh, in multiple languages. And we've got a GenStar MPPT map, so you can understand all the terminals, and a template. A template for mounting the unit. There we go. So that's rather nice to have too. So a template that you can get all the screw holes in the right places. And a little box full of joyous things. So we've got terminal blocks, some more ferrite coils, screws, and a, another comms cable. And this one's labeled CAN, MS CAN. So it's a proprietary CAN system. And now I'm getting into the unit itself. It's got some handles on here. Right. Whoa. <laughs> I like the use of cardboard, and this foam, I'm guessing, by the blackness of it, is um, a recyclable product. Uh, might have to fact check that one later. Whoa. Well, first impressions, I love the color. <laughs> I mean, black black really uh, looks great in a technical environment. Kind of looks pretty serious. So there is the unit. Um, gee, it's got one very solid heatsink. So obviously passive cooling through a heatsink is a, a major feature. I don't know if there's any fans in there, I don't think so. But yeah, it's got a massive heatsink on this unit because Remember, in some configurations, this can go up to uh, many kilowatts of solar. In fact, now's a good chance just to run through uh, what those ratings are. So this unit comes in kind of three versions, a 60 amp, an 80 amp, and a 100 amp output version. Uh, all three of those models can take up to 200 volts of DC input, which is great. So it's gonna suit you know, longer strings uh, than previously was possible. The nominal battery voltages is very wide. So from 12, 24, 48, 36, and 48. So 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt battery systems, nominal. But depending on what your battery voltage is will determine basically the amount of power that you can transmit into that battery uh, from the MPPT. So um, if we're using a 12 volt battery and the 60 amp version, we're down at like 800 watts of power, uh, being able to charge that battery. Uh, with, and you could put up to 1200 watts of um, PV on that unit because there's 150 percent overload or overload capacity that these are designed for, which is really great. But at the high end, if you've got a 48 volt battery connected to this, 
um, <laughs> you could do a, a massive 8,000 watts of panels uh, with that 150% oversizing uh, rule. So 8,000 watts of panels, it will derate down to 5,320 watts of DC power into the battery. But remember, peak watts of panels are not real watts because they derate when they put them in the sun and heat up. The, the peak efficiency is amazing, 99%. Oh, geez, Morningstar people, you, you're gonna have very little place to go at 99% efficient. <laughs> what, where do you go next? Um, the battery operating voltage range is from eight to 72 volts. So if you've got a really dead battery, a 12 volt battery that's virtually dead, it'll still charge it from eight volts upwards. It's got um, a load current um, supply of up to 30 amps and a very, very small self-consumption of just three watts. So that's that's great. This unit is not gonna be discharging your batteries uh, uh, when it's not actually uh, got any solar connected to it at three watts. The operating temperature range in Celsius is minus 30 to plus 45. So you probably don't wanna put this in direct sunlight. Um, remember, this is a heat sink. It's trying to dissipate energy from the electronics. And if you preheat this up in the sun, it's not gonna be able to work effectively. They come with a five year warranty, uh, which is really good. It's got a, a lot of um, uh, certifications, and but importantly, IEC 62109 part one. And that means it's for those in Australia and New Zealand, it's an approved product. Now, in Australia, we have an approved product list, which just confirms that this unit meets some basic safety requirements that IEC 62109 Part 1 require, particularly earth fault detection, and that's a big deal. So it's on the um, Clean Energy Council's list of approved products, and there are very few maximum power point tracking charge controllers on that list. So that's a big plus. And for those who are not familiar with the Australian requirement for listing on a uh, CEC website, it means that you can get access to rebates. So, so rebates from the small scale technology scheme are conditional on being listed on that um, database. So there's the unit and uh, there is the ready rail system. So there is the aptly named ready rail, little tin rail that it clips onto. So we might start by putting the BMS one on and that clips in there. And then we've got our load control that clips in there. And we've got our um, ready rail shunt and that clips on there. A little bit tricky. There we go. And of course, you've got to line those pins up. There they all are, very nicely lined up. And it has a cover, which you've got some knockouts to remove. So you've got status lights that are visible on the ready rail system. And all the cabling, etc., cetera, is um, screened uh, here somewhat. So the expandable GenStar maximum power point tracking system with the ready rail modules. Now there's another feature of this, which I haven't mentioned yet, and I'm pretty excited by it, it's that you can use your phone to actually program it and monitor it. So there's both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, transmitter chip on this unit. So if you're using Bluetooth, just being in close proximity, it supports uh, iOS and Android. So it doesn't matter what type of phone you've got, you'll be able to uh, directly monitor this unit. And that means probably the most expensive screen around is the one in your pocket can actually give you some really good uh, data for monitoring and, con and configuring this unit. So there you go, the GenStar. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Future Glenn here. Just a few details that I missed when I made their initial recording. I wanted to point out that with the ready shunt, it can be supplied with or without an actual uh, shunt itself. So a current measuring shunt. So if you're ordering one and you've already got a shunt, uh, you don't need it. But if you haven't, you'd want to order one as well. The ready BMS is currently compatible with Pylontech and the Discover Smart Lithium batteries. And I suspect more will follow as testing is completed. You can also insert an SD card into the slot and that really simplifies commissioning of the GenStar. Uh, it can be effectively cloned so that you can take the SD card out of one unit and pop it into another and uh, the integrator runs automatically and brings it to the same settings. So that's a great feature if you've got a, a larger installation or a uh, rinse and repeat design.